Okay, one more small topic before we finish this lecture. We spoke before about box sizing. So specifying the size of the box, and we talked about borders of box sizing being the border box, meaning that if I specify some width or some height, it will include, always include from the edge of the border to the other edge of the border. And we also showed that as we change the width of our element, since the content inside the box shifted, the height of the box shifted as well. So let's go ahead and add some more content into our box and we'll use the Emmet plugin, E-M-M-E-T. Go ahead and look it up. We'll save it, we'll, um, we'll refresh it and now we see it's much bigger than before. Let's lower this a little bit so you could see. So because I added extra content, you could see that the height of our element is now 162. Now, but what happens if I constrain our element's height as well? something is gonna have to give, right? Because there's just no space left. So let's adjust a couple of things. First of all, let's go ahead and make this back to 10. So the padding will be just 10 all around. And the border is kind of looking unseemly. So we'll make it like five, five pixels. And go ahead and the margin, does margin just the matter now. So let's refresh and now it's a little bit better. Okay, so let's go ahead and now give it a height that will clearly not be able to fit all the content of our box so let's give it a height of let's say 50 pixels and we'll save and refresh as you can see what's going hap what's happening now is is that our content spilled over outside of our box and if we actually place some element right below it let's go ahead and place another div and we'll say again lorem ipsum here and we'll save and we'll refresh you could see it's spilling over right over the other content so it's basically spilling over out of the box Let's go ahead and remove that for a minute. Okay, so how do we deal with this? Well, there's a couple of ways of dealing with it. And there's just a property to help us do that. And the property is called overflow. So we are overflowing at the moment, we are overflowing our content outside of the box. So what should we do with that overflow? So by default, it, by default the overflow is visible. And this is exactly what's going on. So if I save this and refresh this again, it's the same thing. However, there's a couple more options we could do. Number one is we could just clip it. So in order to clip it, we could say, go ahead and have it hidden. So if it's hidden, then if we refresh, it'll just go ahead and clip it where the box ends. However, there's a couple more options we could do. We could say auto. Auto means go ahead and put scroll bars wherever they're needed in order for us to look at the entire content. So let's go ahead and refresh that. You can see I have a scroll bar here and I can now scroll through my entire content right inside that box. If I wanted to, I could keep the scroll gutters always visible no matter whether or not I need them or not by just saying scroll as the property value. If I refresh, now I have scroll both ways even though there's no nothing to scroll here, but I could still scroll uh, up and down. Let's go ahead and change it back to auto and refresh. Okay, so now we have the scroll bar just where we need it. While this is a perfectly acceptable solution to get your content inside the available space that you have, I will warn you that users absolutely hate double scrolling. Having a scroll bar on the side of the browser plus having to scroll inside some element is something that is not preferred. However, there are cases where it's perfectly normal and expected to do. For example, if you're you know, looking through, let's say, terms of service and you just really want to pack in your entire UI into one visible chunk, yet you want them to be able to scroll through some terms of service or something like that or some, some other content. A solution for your overflow being auto is certainly an acceptable one. Okay, so in summary, we spoke about the box model and really the box model is this very essential topic to understand about CSS and as we go on to uh, CSS layouts. We talked about the fact that you should prefer to use box sizing bo border box and that will keep things consistent for you as you change the border and the padding properties. We spoke about the universal selector, the star selector, and how it can affect every single element in the entire HTML page. And we also spoke about cumulative and collapsing margins. Remember, horizontal margins are cumulative, and for the most part, in most circumstances, the vertical ones collapse. We also spoke about the cases where the content overflows the size of the actual box, and what do we do about it using the overflow property. Next, we're going to talk about the background property.